Welcome to Around the House, presented by Boss Services. This is the show that helps you around the house, your complete source for all your home questions, featuring in-depth interviews with the best home services experts in the industry. And now, here are your hosts, Boss Services owners and authors, Jeff and Jerry Street. Well, hey there. Hey, welcome to the show. Oh, all right, we're doing it. So uh, tell me, what are you in the middle of right now? <laughs> Uh, it's like we've met. I'm always in the middle of something in my home. Um, what am I in the middle of right now? I am building, well, I am finishing the uh, the retile of my bathroom after the water leak repair. Mm. And uh, that's uh, less than fun. So, mm-hmm. yep, yep. Uh, and I am also, because you can't do one thing at a time, <laughs> I am also uh, building a roof over my front porch and tying it into my existing roof, which uh, makes me wish that I had paid a little bit more attention to geometry and algebra and all that stuff in high school because I cannot figure out angles. So it's quite amazing how much math is in everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, only if somebody would have told me that earlier. Though They were telling us. We just weren't listening. They, we were not listening. Yeah, I don't have enough fingers to calculate the things I need to calculate, and it's killing me. <laughs> yeah, and when you start dividing on your fingers, they get shorter. <laughs> yeah, so yes, they do. That's they problem. almost get shorter from some of the saws. <laughs> so, um, so of those projects, which is your favorite? Well, I do not enjoy tiling even yeah. a little bit. There you go. I do not enjoy building a roof even a little bit. So, <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't, yeah. Um, I want to go cut the grass. I enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, mind numbing. Yeah, yes, just driving the tractor <laughs> around. Yeah. NASCAR in the yard. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, no, both of those things don't sound like fun. Um, I guess the secret to that shower is keeping the water on the inside of the shower, huh? Well, the water needs to stay on the inside of the shower and then go down the drain. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. that's where we went wrong. It was in the shower and then it was on the outside of the drain. So, yeah. Well, doing it yourself projects. I mean, look, you got to expect some of that stuff. Yeah. I mean, well, it was two years. It, it lasted two years um, mm-hmm. because I did it wrong the first time. But it's done right now. So, yeah, I consulted uh, consulted the plumbers, found you know, out what I did wrong. You're not the average, but I, I wonder what the average uh, to-do list looks like around the house. You know, I would imagine it's a lot smaller than mine. <laughs> well, you're you're not going to be a good one to ask that. Um, yeah. Your list is longer. You're you're building a house, uh, piece by piece. Yeah. Um, I'll bet normally. I don't know. In my situation, I probably have a dozen things going on at any one time, but I don't think anything's as major as what you're talking about. You know, yeah. I if I put, I'll bet I could knock my list out in a weekend, and it would be uh, good to go. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, yeah, I come home and, well, we're pretty much done moving walls now, but there was a time when I came home and I wondered if a wall was still going to be there. So my wife is, uh, my wife loves demo day. <laughs> demo day is pretty sweet. Um, it's just putting it back. Yes. That's where it gets hairy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, I'm glad you got through most of that and it sounds like uh, that'll be ongoing. Is the shower done? Uh, I've got to, we did the grout. I've got a Put the door back on it. No, you're um, close. But yeah, we're it, it's usable. Um, probably yeah, today or tomorrow. Well, today uh, we're introducing Josh Kitchell, and he's the owner of Mosquito Mob uh, here in Barron County. Where's he from? Uh, his office, I think, is based out of Coloma. Nice. Yeah, local yeah. guy. Um, and Josh is the expert in taking your backyard back from the creepy crawlers, right? Yeah, creepy crawlers, the mosquitoes, the ticks, everything. Yeah, it's uh, if you don't enjoy your backyard, he's gonna tell you how to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Josh, to the show. So, Josh, nice to have you here. Um, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Taking time out of your guys' schedules. Yeah, absolutely. It's important for us to talk about, uh, you know, highlight other businesses and uh, you know, check out what everybody else is doing. And also figure out how to make our homes better. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Boom. That's what we want to do. Be able to give people their backyards again. Yeah. So I, I do use, use your service and it is, uh, it has been phenomenal so far. Um, I have not been bitten by a mosquito since you guys came over. So that's been good. That's great. <laughs> that's exactly what we want to hear. It's good news. That's like a five-star Google review right there. Yeah. I know. So we just need to actually put that on Google. Oh, just, oh and then yeah, on Facebook. Go to you know, I, mean, yeah. I appreciate you telling me <laughs> it, but mm. <laughs> let's turn that into uh, Well, we'll put, it, we'll put it on a podcast. How about that? Oh, okay. It's close yeah. enough. There you gotcha. go. So uh, Mosquito Mob. Yes, sir. Tell us about it. How'd you get started? What, what do you guys do and all that? Yeah. So uh, I've been in the pesticide industry for about five years now. 
and um, I uh, originally started it with a, another local company, and um, that's where I kind of learned the pesticide industry. Never in a million years when I was in high school talking to, you know, your school counselors and stuff like that, when they would be like, hey, what do you want to do for a living? You know, teacher, da, da, da. What about killing skeeters? Ne- yeah. No, never. <laughs> killing skeeters. Ne- never, never, ever <laughs> thought about that. I actually... I came from the fitness industry, so I owned a couple of Anytime Fitnesses, one in Grand Haven, one in Holland, and then uh, did those for 10 years, sold them, and it was just like moved back to the area because obviously I lived in Grand Haven, and that's when I got a job with uh, another company. And uh, I mean, honestly, it's just, it's crazy. There's kind of an it factor about being in the pesticide industry that it kind of draws you to it. Like, I mean, I really enjoy it. I enjoy the people. I enjoy the service that we do. I enjoy the results that we get. Um, when people kind of say, you know, like, I mean, I kind of joke about it, but I was being serious, you know, giving people their backyards again, you know, you're creating memories. And uh, I really enjoy that. So I just kind of, I'm entrepreneur at heart, always have been, always have an entrepreneur mind. You never sleep because it's always clicking in there. So it's like, well, you know, let's, let's do our own thing. So I talked to my manager and, and I was like, hey, I think we have a real opportunity to do something special here. And so we're like, yeah, let's go ahead and Let's do our own. So that's kind of, we sat at lunch at, um, uh, where was it? I think it was El Rodeo, actually. Just ordered chips and salsa and margaritas. And There's <laughs> like, so much business that happens So there. much <laughs> business at El Rodeo. And uh, we were just kind of thinking of names. And uh, no joke, that's where we kind of thought about Mosquito Mob. And uh, uh, the, the rest is kind of history. It's been uh, it's been whirlwind of uh, success so far. I'm so thankful. And uh, it's just, it's it's been great. Well, so how long have you been in business then? Since March of this year. Oh, gotcha. So <laughs> yeah, you're, no, yeah, you're like, listen, yeah. if anyone's listening, that's not the way to do it. So, <laughs> yeah. so let me tell you, time <laughs> is, yeah. is what you're supposed to do. You know, you gotta, you gotta get some capital, you know, <laughs> you yeah. know do those kind of things where you're just, yeah, I'm a, I'm in dive, dive in and then see how deep the water is later. <laughs> no, that's, that's awesome. I mean, yeah. um, that, that's a big industry shift to go from sure. the, the fitness industry and have, um, well, I imagine you had an office, right? Like you're, you're you know, an office gig and then going out in the field. I'm, so you're in yeah. the field now, right? Yeah. I mean, that's split time. I sure. mean, that, that's the thing. Obviously it's, uh, the original plan was I was going to spend a lot of time in the field mm-hmm. and then my manager was going to handle all the administration, but it's just kind of, I'm sure you guys have experienced that sometimes that the workload demands you to focus elsewhere. So, yeah. you know, I, I've been right. fortunate enough that, um, I mean, I've had a lot of guys that are already licensed and certified that want to work for me. So finding employees when I've had to focus more on the sales, the administrative side yeah. and whatnot ha- hasn't been difficult for me. So yeah. unlike so many people right now. So I'm the absolute abnormal case. Sure. Um, but uh, I, but I do still obviously go out in the field and and help with the guys or just for efficiency wise to get somebody taken care of. That's really close to where I live. And the the crews may be elsewhere another part of the county mm-hmm. i just go do it yeah it no absolutely i mean it, you know a service-based business right yeah. it's all about the clients and uh we're all guilty of uh, pushing paperwork off uh, to yeah. go serve the client and then all of a sudden you're sunday doing all the paperwork <laughs> but yeah, yeah. that's oh, awesome yeah. Yeah, and then it's uh, it's like, oh, crap, they have taxes. I got to make sure my QuickBooks is done. <laughs> it's like, all oh, that. I forgot about all that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the government will wait, right? Oh, That'll yeah. That'll be all right. <laughs> um, so tell us about the services that you provide. What exactly do you do? Yeah, we're known for uh, providing a season worth of treatments. And what I mean by a season, breaking it down, is we'll come out and treat a property. When we come out to the property, we're going to treat the barrier of it, all the trees, the shrubs, and the bushes, and the interior of the property, the foundation of the home, the eaves and the overhangs and the windows and the doors. That's primarily going to be for your creepy crawlers, you know, your stink bugs, your spiders, etc. But when we're treating the barrier, the, the trees, the shrubs, the trees, the shrubs and the bushes, that's going to be for your your mosquitoes and your ticks. So we're going to do that treatment. Your average property in Barron County is just at maybe a hair over a half acre. That should take about 15 minutes to do. And then uh, we'll come back out another 21 days or three weeks later. And then we nice. do that for a full season, which on average is about eight treatments. So April till the very beginning of October, the very end of September. Yeah. 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 So it's funny that you mentioned stink bugs because I didn't make that connection with your treatments and stink bugs, but I have, 
I have noticed a significant difference in the stink bugs around my yeah. house. And I didn't really think much of it until you said that. Cause I didn't, I was under the impression you could not treat for those and it you just had to accept them. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, uh, yeah, the, it's, Hey, it's Michigan and yeah. it's the West coast of Michigan too. Stink bugs are horrible, yeah. just like ticks and everybody I mean, it's just a problem. Everyone's going to have them. Um, even in town, <laughs> you're still yeah. going to have stink bugs, but yeah, the products that we use actually also treats for the stink bugs and spiders as well. Now, like what we like to say is if they're already in your home, well, we're not going in your home to right. treat. But what we could do is we could literally put a barrier of defense from preventing any more from going in. Or when the when it's spring and when it gets to fall, that's when the stink bugs and stuff start to go inside and outside your home. Right. And when they're doing that, we put that barrier on there and they go outside, then the product's going to get on them and it's going to kill them then as well. So uh, in, the, in the mosquito world, because that's obviously yeah. what most people think of, and that's, I mean, that's why I called you because I... I'm worried about mosquitoes because they yeah. directly, you know, impact me and my enjoyment of my yard. So, oh, for sure. What uh, what can a homeowner do um, to prevent mosquitoes? Like, what can they? Well, they can call him, right? Well, yeah, obviously, sure. other than yeah. that, I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Besides calling us, um, no, seriously, the the biggest thing that you could do for uh, mosquito and tick prevention is going to be grooming your property. That's yeah. the biggest thing. Um, when a yard gets out of control or there's just uh, a lot of things that's around a yard that can hold standing water. I mean, for Pete's sakes, a little bottle cap, no joke, can hold hundreds, if not thousands of mosquito larvae in just that small little amount. So uh, an ungroomed lawn or clogged gutters or um, tarps that aren't turned over or um, I mean, we've been to properties where they've had old above ground pools that should be. <laughs> <laughs> removed that aren't removed. I mean, the, you're talking yeah. about millions of larvae at that point. So just grooming the property is going to be the biggest thing. Um, the the ticks love anything that's tall grass. So, I mean, it's that's the biggest thing. And, and it comes to dogs. I mean, and children, <laughs> because yeah. they love to play in that stuff as, as well. So um, that's just where the ticks love to kind of hang out. So if you know that there's a particular area where an animal or um, a, a child likes to kind of play in, maybe just groom that area and push it, push, make your yard a little bit bigger, push that area back a little bit, um, basically into areas that you know that they're not going to be playing in. Those are the, that's really honestly the biggest thing. Like I like to tell people too, like our service is not going to be an eradication. It's a partnership. So for our services to be effective means that our customers need to do their parts as well. And then when they're doing their parts, that's how you maximize the quality of our service. Well, and that, that was going to be my follow-up question is obviously you're looking for these conditions when you're out there. So are you Every are time, you taking yeah. care of these conditions or is it more just making the homeowner aware of the conditions? Or Yeah, it depends. Right. And what I mean by that is the, the first thing that we do when we get to a property um, is we, we're going to walk the property to observe it. Even if we've already been there three or four times, you know, we're still because there can always be something else that – um, uh, especially like in a backyard, if it's gated, you can have a dog, you know, that's, that's out that normally it wasn't out before. So besides the safety factor, we want to also walk the property to take note of what it is that they're seeing. If there's stuff like tarps or bird baths or kiddie pools or stuff like that with standing water, we'll tip it. Absolutely. Every time, you know, we'll, we'll just tip it or we actually use a larvicide that we'll put into those areas that will take care of those larvae as well. But like clogged gutters, as much as the homeowner would like us to take care of the clogged gutters, <laughs> right. I mean, it's not, you know, we're, we're not getting on no ladders with a 60 yeah. pound pack, you know, and I mean, that's the thing. So, but what we do is um, on all of our tablets, we actually make those notes for the homeowner. So when they complete the service, uh, it will tell them, um, you know, note the clogged gutters or you had a swamp swampy area in the, back right, right corner of your property, those kind of things. So they can at least be made aware. So even if they call in and they're like, Hey, I noticed that um, you guys are out here a week ago and there's a lot of activity. It, we're kind of we're, what's, what's going on is and I can take a look at the notes or we can take our staff can take a look at the notes and see, Oh, Hey, we know it's clogged gutters or there's a bunch of tires that were in the back. Do we by chance get able to get that taken care of? Oh no, I didn't really. I mean, they're just tires. They have water in it. Well, I mean, you're talking about hundreds, if not thousands yeah. of larvae that can be in there. And with heat and humidity, like what's coming this week, there will be hatchings. So, yeah. so on the, on the mosquito side of things, like, so if I'm in a, if I'm in a semi, you know, populated area and I want to enjoy my backyard, but my neighbors on both sides don't get their yards treated, <clears throat> how does that affect my treatment? Well, the property that's getting treated 
uh, that barrier that I was telling you about, think of it, the best analogy that I can use is like a protective force field that is, we're putting a, a bubble of protection around that yard. So even though the neighbors, even though the neighbors might not be getting treated, that even though that we did the barrier spray, treated all the, the foliage that right. was around there, what that's going to do is there's a residual product that's getting left on that foliage. So if there are mosquitoes from another yard coming in, it's still going to protect that yard that got treated. Now, obviously, okay. the best protection is if the whole neighborhood got it. Right. But you're still going to see a large reduction in your mosquito population, even if your neighbors aren't getting you treated. Gotcha. So other than uh, when we talk about mosquitoes and, and stink bugs and uh, – and ticks and everything. What other kind of bugs are are you looking for, or should homeowners be worried about in the yard? Or yeah, I mean the 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 big thing is going to be uh, like if if somebody has a massive mole problem. Like, let me be clear, I do not remove <laughs> moles. Like, let's let's be clear for that. But what do moles feed on? Those grubs. I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> a little, yeah, yeah I didn't, I didn't know me. either. Yeah, I'm not, I'm I little know. nasty grubs. <laughs> gotcha. So the thing is, though, we can actually use a dry granule product on those uh, yards, and we could take care of the grubs. Now, if there's no food, where are they going to go? They're not going to stick around. They're going to go somewhere else where they have a food source. Yep. So that's how we can help take care of that. And that same granule product can also help with ants. And our guys hate it, but <laughs> uh, we can't treat for ground bees. Now, we protect. So ground what? Ground bees. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, oh, right so, on the ground, Jeff. Yeah, no, right I know. I've, you know, I've been oh, involved just mowing. In that. You're just yep. mowing, yeah. and then and you uh, get popped. Oh, man. Yeah, so it's you're building worse. a barn, and they all come out at you. <laughs> yeah. Yep, nope, been there. Those yeah, are the ones. It's, yeah. the, it's the absolute worst. Yeah. Now, regular honeybees and those kind of things, I mean, we – we are very conscious of bees, butterflies. Um, we are very conscious of our ecosystem, and we do everything above reproach. So we don't spray any open blooms because we want to protect the bees. So yeah. we, we purposely avoid all of those things. Well, and that was one of my questions, too. I mean, obviously, this is a, a pet-friendly process. 100%, yeah. Um, you treat uh, farms and that kind of thing yeah. with farm animals and all that. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And... Uh, um, Cause there's, so we have a couple of horses, mm -hmm. so there's standing water that goes along with that. Yeah. Like they drink, well, they're big, okay, so they drink yeah. a lot of water. Yeah. So um, it's kind of hard to get away from all that sometimes. But, uh, yeah. you know, and, and what we do is we're constantly dumping that to give them fresh water and make sure that there's obviously nothing mm -hmm. growing in there. But, um, but, yeah, my wife is very concerned with that kind of thing. Like what's this doing for the kids and the pets and all that? Yeah, well, we do have another option besides just chemical. People can choose an all-natural option. So especially something like the horses, what I would recommend is if somebody wanted, you can either do, it, we call it a combo, where you do your chemical around the home, but we have your livestock. We'll just do an all-natural right around there, um, which would be perfectly fine for the horses. Now, when it also comes to both of our ap applications, if it's chemical or all-natural, all you have to do is just stay off the treated area for 30 minutes. Then you can resume regular activity activities just like normal but uh you're you're absolutely correct i mean especially with horses or other uh, farms that we treat with livestock i mean standing water is that that and that's the number one problem that you're going to face so the thing is you could just do that all natural treatment and that does do a really good job as acting like a deterrent and like one thing that i've learned with uh doing some horse farms is uh, dragonflies are they carry a lot of disease when it comes to equine so the, we use the all natural to deter all the dragonflies from coming in because it acts as a deterrent. It doesn't kill anything. It just keeps it from coming into the area. Well, and anybody with a barn like that, yeah. um, half of your summer is fighting flies and <laughs> oh yeah, everything, yeah. spiders, all oh, that. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's like half. That's what my wife does full time in the summertime. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we offer a, an add on service specifically just for flies as well. Yep. So that, that a lot of customers get um, your your barbecue champion, your outdoor barbecue champions. You know, they they yeah. the flies are going to be right around those propane tanks. So that's right. the thing. So we treat around a lot of those areas. Well, I I mean that covers everything I had. Um, how can uh, someone get a hold of you if they're looking for uh, to get their yard back, take uh, their yard back? Yeah, the easiest way is actually to connect with us on Facebook. Uh, we have a full team that's uh, watching our Facebook at all time. That's Mosquito Mob Michigan. Um, or they can contact me directly at 616-843-6292. 
and uh, we have a 24 hour guarantee turnaround time. So by the time that somebody signs up, we could be at your property within 24 hours. Honestly, most of the time we get it done the same day. So even if it's after five o'clock on a Thursday, as long as the crews are st- still out working, they love working. So oh, I mean, yeah, they, they <laughs> love working. So it's like, all you gotta do is give them a call and be like, Hey, there's actually a customer five miles away. Nice. You want, you want to pick it up? Like, Absolutely. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the best way to get a hold of us. And, and what's your service area? The state of Michigan. The whole state. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we are obviously located here in Berrien County. I mean, 90% of our customers are in Berrien yeah. County, but we do um, a lot of specialized jobs that are on the east side of the state. Um, some larger properties that uh, just um, with our experience, I mean, every, every one of my staff members, this is at least the third year of treating licensed. And so yeah. they have a lot of experience. And with that experience just comes the knowledge of being able to treat some large properties, some of the farms farms, etc. Um, we do a lot with the city of Portage, all of their parks, all of their events, their walking trails. So uh, we, I mean, for, for the right job, we'll go out of Berrien County, but primarily we service Berrien yeah. County. Well, is there anything we missed? Or is there anything you wanted to add about what you guys do? Or I, no, I think that's I think we covered uh, a it, mosquito, right? a mosquito yeah. and tick abatement in a nutshell. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Skeeter yeah. killing. Skeeter well, killing all day. I, I learned a lot today. I mean, you just make the call and Sit back and have a coffee and wait for it to get done. Absolutely. I learned what moles eat today. There you go. Yeah, Yeah, grubs. I didn't know. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know why I have so many moles in my yard. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's the thing. Just think about the food source. Like I said, if there's no food, I mean, if if you're going to Chick-fil-A on Sunday and it's closed, you're going to have to go somewhere else. That's a good analogy. I'm just saying. That's a good analogy. Your backyard is like a Chick-fil-A. My backyard is Chick-fil-A. For mole. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Well, thanks, Josh. Thanks (laughs) for coming in. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.